Bankruptcies are up 45%. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our lead story today, we have some new information that shows the next big wave of bankruptcies is starting, and it's not just in the consumer space. We're seeing businesses impacted in a huge way, and I want you to understand as we get into this story is why this is the beginning of what is to be a far worse wave of bankruptcies because we haven't even seen the impact from the labor market, which we talked about the other day. We were seeing cracks forming in the labor market. Well, based on the data we now have today, I want to show you that those cracks are running far deeper than I thought. And if you think the global economy is getting worse, well, I've got some charts that are going to give you some compelling evidence that perhaps it is far worse than even you or I thought, as we have new data showing that there's a massive slowdown, not just here in the U.S., but around the world. Let's over to where we see this report on bankruptcies with a headline, February bankruptcy filings register a whopping double digit increases across major filing categories over last year. Now I want you to keep in mind as we go through the story, what was the big thing that was happening last year? Well, we still had people that had pandemic money. We were coming off a lot of these you know, pandemic programs that kind of put a suspension to bankruptcy filings. So it was a matter of time before we saw people start to run out of money and in particular during a slowing economy. You know, we use the analogy on the show all the time about musical chairs and with the economy rolling around, and there not being enough chairs for all the people. So in terms of when the economy starts to run out of money and the music stops, well, what should we see is an increase in bankruptcies? And we did. Check this out, February 2023, year over year highlights. So this from last year, overall filings up 18%. Commercial chapter 11s, a whopping 83% to February 2023, can you imagine that? Commercial filings up 18%, subchapter five, small business elections. So these are really key, these small businesses, they're up 45% to 120 in February 2023, individual filings up 18%. Now I know as you look at some of these points, you say, well, those aren't a lot of increases, but when you go from a baseline of not many, and now you see an uptick in these, and remember, Remember, we've talked about this not only on this show, but when I've gone on my buddy's show, Jeff Snyder, over at Eurodollar University, we said, look, if there's going to be some structural issues to the economy and they start to show up around this time right now, you know, in March and April, then all of a sudden, this has got a signal that there's far worse problems coming. And as we dig deeper into this report, check this out. The growing number of households and businesses filing for bankruptcy reflects the mounting economic challenges they face. Debt loads are expanding as the price of goods and services have gone up with inflation. Of course, we knew that was happening. And the cost of borrowing continues to rise. Now, so there's the kind of idea here is, well, wait a minute. It's just the problem is the cost of borrowing is too much. What they're missing is two other factors. One we talked about on the show yesterday, and that is lending conditions are tightening. So if you needed money, if you say, hey, wait, I'm running out here. I need some money to keep my household running or my business running and you go to the bank and you effectively get told no, well, that's a huge factor as well. And you tack that on top of what they think they're else they're missing is a slowing global economy. Well, you have the perfect storm for a huge rise in bankruptcies. And of course, those of you who are really savvy are thinking right now, wait a minute, haven't you been telling us that that M2 money supply is going negative? Well, yes, it is. And if there's less money out there to pay on debt, well, then we're gonna see them in bankruptcy. And while pandemic relief efforts have largely expired, the safe haven of bankruptcy is continually available for financially distressed businesses and consumers. And of course, we knew that this data point went way down during the pandemic. Again, not only due to the suspension of people filing bankruptcy, but they had money from the government to pay on their loans. But now that's starting to shift. And something that we did not want to see happen and is now happening is some major problems in the labor market. Let's over to CNBC with this story. Layoffs are up nearly five-fold so far this year with tech companies leading the way. Now, we knew tech was laying off in a big way, but look at this. 
Companies announced nearly 90,000 layoffs in March, a sharp step up from the previous month, and a giant acceleration from a year ago. Now, no surprise on the year ago number, but notably a big step up from last month. And we've been hearing from all levels of the government, we've been hearing it in the mainstream media, the economy is strong, it's robust, it can handle higher rates, it can handle a little bit of job losses. And then all of a sudden, what do we see last month? A big surge in corporate layoffs. This, my friends, is a huge problem. As planned layoffs totaled 89,703 for that period, an increase of 15% from February. Year-to-date job cups have soared over 270,000, a whopping increase of 396%. But again, when your baseline is low, now you can see that. We know that companies are approaching 2023 with caution, though the economy is still creating jobs. With the rate hikes continuing and companies reigning in costs, large-scale layoffs we're seeing will likely continue. And that's a good point is, you know, companies, as it says here, reigning in costs. And well, what is a good way, if your company, you know, is seeing that slowdown and experiencing that and saying, wait a minute, we might be running out of cash soon. We might not be able to get money from the bank. We maybe were in a position as a company to file bankruptcy. Well, how do you rein in your costs? Will you get rid of your number one expense? And that is employees. And I'm gonna show you when we get to the end of the show, when we look at these charts, why we're going to see a whole bunch more layoffs here in the months to come. And it's not going to be a pretty picture. And we also know there's some other leading data that shows us that, of course, more layoffs are coming as a warning for stocks and labor data. This from Zero Hedge, who says that worker adjustment and restraining notices or war notices are picking up, to which points to unemployment claims soon rising and a deterioration of the jobs market, posing a risk to stocks. Now, that's a given. When you start to see initial claims really start to accelerate higher, you can see stocks head up for a bit, but eventually they will will fall from that move. We've seen that before, but what is this war notice if you're wondering? It's for companies that have 100 or more employees. Well, if, you may, if you're going to lay them off or do some retraining, well, you've got to put out a notice. And sure enough, what we're seeing is more firms planning to lay off workers. A rise in war notices should be followed by claims. And I know you can kind of see this, that the war notices showed kind of in this gold uh, line against the smooth initial jobless claims. So that when these notices go out, it doesn't mean obviously everyone's getting laid off, but we do notice there is an increase there. And the Cleveland Fed has done an analysis on these war notices, and they show a lead in other labor market indicators, including claims which would make perfect sense. If you get a notice from your employer or your employer puts out a notice, it's gonna lay people off. There's a good chance some people are probably going to get laid off. I doubt they have you know, in HR something better to do than say, hey, you know, maybe we should send out some of these warn notices just because we have a few free hours today. No, of course, it's not a laughing matter. We know for sure that these notices go out, there's a good likelihood that people are going to lose their job afterwards. And this leads changes in the unemployment rate and changes in private employment, which should not be a shock, with the strongest lead relationship over just one month. And so this rise in war notices coincides with a sudden rise in the number of U.S. states showing at least 25% annual rise in their initial claims. And often with this measure, its current threshold, it jumps considerably higher, accumulating into a recession. And we mentioned this on the show in the past, that when you see you know, initial claims start to get to certain levels, you're kind of at the point of no return. It's going to accelerate to the upside. And that's what we're seeing here in this chart from these war notices saying, hey, we're kind of getting there and we're seeing initial claims start to get to this level. And you start to break above you know, 200,000 on a regular basis and you you almost get to a point of no return. We'll say that number may be closer to around 225 to 250. And as we'll see here shortly, we're not far off. As U.S. jobless claims get bumped up by revisions for seasonal swings, this from Bloomberg, as initial unemployment claims were 228,000 in the week ending April 1st, and the prior week was revised up by 48,000 to 246,000, according to the Labor Department. This report also included some updated seasonal factors going back to 2018. Of course, as you know, when they start doing all these seasonal adjustments, it's hard to know what the real data is here, but what we now know is the number 
numbers are heading higher. The question is, is this just a temporary move on a, a part of a larger move higher, or is this just a false showing because of seasonal adjustments? I'll let you decide, weigh in the comments, what do you think? Are initial claims headed a lot higher, or was this just due to some labor department seasonal adjustment, and next week and the weeks to come, it'll be back lower. Continuing claims, which include people have received unemployment benefits for a week or more, are a good indicator of how hard it is for people to find work after losing their job, which was little change at 1.82 million in the week ending March 25th. So that's a good sign. But here, let's talk about how do we know that these initial claims are headed higher? How do we know that this will lead to more bankruptcies? Well, it's simple. You're going to see the economy continue to slow down, which will make the case in the following slides. And what will happen is business will lay people off. People won't have money to pay their debt, so they'll file bankruptcy. That means demand will continue to fall, and some of these marginal businesses, as we've seen in past recessions, well, they'll be forced to file bankruptcy. And so that's one of the ways we know we're at the beginning. But is there something other than perhaps these war notices that might give us some indication that things well, just aren't that good? Well, the answer is yes. And we've talked about this on the show that new order growth is very critical. If there's demand for new orders, then you should see unemployment claims fall. You should see the economy grow. But if you see an initial or new order demand fall, well, then you don't need as many employees because if you don't have the orders to put them to work, well, then you show them the door. Let's head over to the Philly Fed here. When well, we see the current new orders diffusion index against the four-week moving average of initial claims, of course, what we love about the Philly Fed data is not that it's that noisy blue line, which it is, is that it goes back a long time, and we can see this trend. You see the trend is as a blue line heads lower. What do you notice is that initial claims, this four-week smoothed average, well, it tends to rise, and you see that happen every time. Eventually, new order growth comes down. You need fewer people to do the job, and what are we seeing? You know, this new demand for new orders is negative it's contracting now it's now not contracting as much of a big rate suggesting that possibly we could be behind the worst of it but i doubt that and what we should see initial claims here start to head higher and now let's take a look at the official government data i know many of you are big fans of official government data well here you go you have the manufacturer's new orders which smooths out that philly fed and other regional fed data and what do you know that it's starting to roll over and head down but notice the same relationship again as the official data heads lower initial claims head higher and you see that repeat over and over and some of you might say these charts almost kind of look like mirrors of each other well, they do. And that's because when you get you see a demand in new orders decline, you typically need fewer employees and you start to lay them off. So if we see here that, of course, new order demand continues to fall and we've made the case why we should see that, then initial claims should start to head higher. But is there any other evidence that shows a global economy is slowing? Well, there is. And then we got that data yesterday. Here we can see exports and imports down, exports falling to 251 billion from 258 last month, imports down 321 billion to 320 from 326 last month. And of course, when you're part of the world's largest importer, which is the United States, when you see imports falling, it tells you demand is declining. What you want to see in, is in an expanding global economy is both imports and exports rising. They don't have to be every month, but you want to see the trend increasing. But if you see the trend decreasing and missing expectations, well, it's an ominous sign that more layoffs are coming. And here you have the imports of goods and services. This is total imports to the U.S. on a year-over-year -year rate of change. It gets that four-week moving average of initial claims. And notice, again, when we see tend to see decelerations in imports, you see an acceleration in job layoffs. And so we're seeing that now as imports fall, and we should see initial claims rise. And what does that mean for inflation? Well, we look at the price index, which we'll get an update here on a couple of weeks and the price index is headed lower, that means the consumer price. So we've seen import prices in blue head down. That means broad consumer prices should head lower as well, which all bodes to the fact that this beginning wave of bankruptcies is going to get a whole lot worse, my friends, particularly when we see these initial claims continue to tick higher, which I believe we will. And with that, I'm Steve Ann Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.